Hello guys. Welcome to part 2 of UV Visible Spectroscopy. I recommend you watch this series as previous video, Spectroscopy for Biologists. Especially UV Visible Spectroscopy Part 1 and the Molecular Orbital Theory videos to understand the following concepts. The links will be kept in the description box below. Anyway, I will provide a fast recap about the concepts discussed earlier and needed to build up the idea of electronic excitation induced by UV Visible Spectroscopy. So basically, when atoms bind to form molecules, their atomic orbitals overlap to form what is known as molecular orbitals. These molecular orbitals can be categorized as bonding or antibonding. Bonding molecular orbitals are lower in energy than the original atomic and antibonding molecular orbitals, promoting electron density between the bonding atoms. This electron density creates a shared region, known as a covalent bond, which holds the atoms together. It yields bonds like the sigma bond which is a single, stronger bond, and pi bonds which are weaker and typically formed in addition to a sigma bond in double or triple bonds. Conversely, antibonding molecular orbitals are higher in energy and result from destructive interference between the atomic orbitals, leading to regions of electron density that weaken the bond between the atoms. These are known as sigma star and pi star. We also have non-bonding orbitals, also known as non-bonding molecular orbitals or lone pairs, which are electron orbitals that belong to an atom but are not involved in bonding with other atoms. Non-bonding orbitals are vital because they affect molecule shape, reactivity, and properties. They can be found in atoms of elements that have more valence electrons than necessary to form bonds. These extra electrons reside in non-bonding orbitals. A classic example of non-bonding orbitals is found in water, H2O, molecules. Oxygen, O, has six valence electrons, forming two covalent bonds with two hydrogen, H, atoms. The remaining two electrons on oxygen are in non-bonding orbitals. These non-bonding electron pairs give water its bent molecular shape, making it a polar molecule. So, what is the difference between non-bounding and anti-bounding molecular orbitals? Non-bonding orbitals are electron orbitals that belong to an atom but are not involved in chemical bonding. In contrast, anti-bonding orbitals are molecular orbitals resulting from the destructive interference of atomic orbitals. Non-bonding orbitals can influence the properties and reactivity of molecules, whereas anti-bonding orbitals weaken the bonding between atoms and contribute to molecular destabilization. Now let us explain the concept of electronic excitation. In a molecule, electrons occupy specific energy levels or orbitals. These energy levels are quantized, meaning electrons can only occupy certain discrete energy states. The lowest energy level is called the ground state. When a molecule is exposed to ultraviolet, UV, or visible light, this absorption of light energy promotes an electron from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. The excited state lasts for a very short period, less than 10 nanoseconds because this state is not stable. Then, the extra energy is lost through a relaxation process, such as the emission of light or heat. The energy difference between its occupied, ground state, and unoccupied, excited state, depends on the molecule and its electronic structure. Different molecules have different energy level arrangements, leading to light absorption at specific wavelengths. So, as you know, the electrons in a molecule can be of one of three types, namely, single bond, sigma, multiple bond, pi, or non-binding. Sigma bond electrons have the lowest energy level and are the most stable electrons. These would require a lot of energy to be displaced to higher energy levels. As a result, these electrons generally absorb light in the lower wavelengths of ultraviolet light, and these transitions are rare. Pi bond electrons have much higher energy levels for the ground state. Therefore, these electrons are relatively unstable, can be excited more easily, and require lesser energy for excitation. These electrons would therefore absorb energy in the ultraviolet and visible light radiations. Non-bonding electrons generally belong to lone pairs of atoms. These are of higher energy levels than pi electrons and can also be excited by ultraviolet and visible light. When imparted with energy in the form of light radiation, these electrons get excited from the highest occupied molecular orbital, HOMO, to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, LUMO. The resulting species is known as the excited state or anti-bonding state, like sigma star and pi star orbitals. This figure shows all the possible transitions. But, in fact, sigma electrons are held very tightly, and hence the energy required is so high. UV, visible spectroscope covers only the smallest energy transitions. Therefore, only compounds with pi electrons or non-bounding usually produce UV, visible spectra.
The most common transitions in case of UV, visible spectroscopy are pi to pi star transition. This transition involves the excitation of an electron from a bonding pi orbital to an antibonding pi star orbital. It is often observed in molecules containing conjugated systems, such as double bonds or aromatic rings. This pi to pi star transition typically occurs in the UV region of the electromagnetic spectrum. N to pi star transition. This transition involves the excitation of an electron from a non-bonding N orbital to an antibonding pi star orbital. It occurs when a lone pair of electrons in a non-bonding orbital interacts with a nearby antibonding pi star orbital. This transition is commonly observed in compounds with electronegative atoms, such as oxygen or nitrogen. It usually occurs in the UV or visible region of the spectrum. Effect of conjugation. Let us first define the concept of conjugation. The primary difference between a conjugated and an isolated double bond is that a conjugated double bond refers to an organic structure with alternating double and single bonds. In contrast, an isolated double bond refers to an organic structure with no alternating double and single bonds. In this case, double bonds are arranged randomly. So, in simple words, conjugation is achieved by alternating single and double bonds. Conjugation is a special arrangement of atoms in a molecule that allows the electrons to move around and share their energy more easily. Think of the electrons in a molecule as little particles that are responsible for bonding and interacting with other molecules. In a conjugated system, the atoms are arranged in a way that creates a pathway for these electrons to travel along. It's like a road or a bridge that connects different parts of the molecule. This pathway allows the electrons to spread out and be shared among multiple atoms instead of being stuck in one place. This sharing of electrons makes the molecule more stable and changes its properties. The presence of conjugation lowers the energy of the LUMO, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, making it closer in energy to the HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbital. This reduction in the energy gap between the HOMO and LUMO is what we mean when we say that conjugation decreases the energy gap making it potentially more reactive or capable of interacting with light in unique ways. So, the compound which has enough double bonds will absorb visible light, and the compound will be colored. The presence of a conjugated system is often associated with the existence of a chromophore. So, what is chromophore? A chromophore is a particular part of a molecule responsible for its color or ability to absorb and reflect light. Imagine you have a molecule, and within that molecule, there is a specific group or atom that has the power to interact with light. This particular group or atom is called a chromophore. When light shines on a molecule with a chromophore, the chromophore absorbs specific colors or wavelengths of light while reflecting others. The absorbed light energy causes the electrons in the chromophore to jump to higher energy levels. The specific structure and arrangement of atoms in the chromophore determine which light colors it can absorb and which ones it reflects. Different chromophores have different absorption patterns, so they appear to us as different colors. One popular example of a chromophore is the conjugated system of double bonds found in molecules such as beta-carotene. Beta-carotene is the pigment responsible for the orange color of carrots and many other fruits and vegetables. The conjugated system in beta-carotene consists of a long chain of alternating single and double bonds. This arrangement allows the electrons in the double bonds to move freely along the chain, creating a pathway for electron delocalization. When white light, which contains all colors of the visible spectrum, shines on beta-carotene, the conjugated system absorbs specific colors of light, particularly in the blue and green regions of the spectrum. As a result, beta-carotene reflects or transmits light corresponding to the red and orange colors, giving it its characteristic vibrant orange color. Chromophores are crucial in UV visible spectroscopy because they are responsible for light absorption in the ultraviolet, UV, and visible regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The presence of chromophores in a molecule determines its ability to absorb light at specific wavelengths. Different chromophores have characteristic absorption spectra, meaning they absorb light at specific regions of the UV visible spectrum. By analyzing the absorption pattern, scientists can identify the type of chromophore present and gain insights into the structure and nature of the molecule. This was everything for this video. Thank you for watching.